In the eye of the GTA mod storm. And China don't like your streams. This is Screenplay Daily News. It's Monday the 26th of June, I'm Nick. And I'm Steph, and here's what we deemed newsworthy. After a week of uncertainty, it looks like the GTA mod tool Open 4 is back up and running. In response to a statement from Rockstar, Open4 released an update suggesting they would be continuing development in defiance of a cease and desist letter from Rockstar's parent company, Take-Two. But it sounds like Rockstar took mum and dad aside and just kind of went, hey, maybe don't just rag on our fans and shut down their cool stuff all the time. As a result, Rockstar have come out and said, quote, Take-Two has agreed it will generally not take legal action against third-party projects involving Rockstar's PC games that are single-player, non-commercial, and respect the intellectual property rights of third parties. This does not apply to multiplayer or online services, tools, files, libraries, or functions that could be used to impact multiplayer or online services, or use or importation of other IP, including other Rockstar IP, in the project. So it looks like all the review bombing worked and Open 4's back. Yeah, so on one hand, I'm like, yeah, power to the people. Go and then, the people. On the other hand, I'm a little bit worried because, you know, isn't this a little bit like giving into terrorists' demands? Right, you're worried that what what could we now achieve with just negative res uh, reviews on Steam? Yeah. What else could we do? <laughs> what kind of power do we now wield with these fingies? Uh, I mean, I guess the part of this is that the uh, a lot of the mods that were used for the online hacks, they're gone and they're staying gone. Open4 got sort of caught up in this because there was an aspect to it that may have been used by people right. uh, to, to hack online, but, but it is not used for that. That is not why it's built. Uh, and so Open4 kind of just got swept up in this right. uh, and take two kind of knee jerk pulled the parachute. So open four was like a an innocent bystander in all this. You're really <laughs> doubling down on this terrorist analogy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that's what I see in the news every day. It was collateral so this is where damage. My, where my head is at. It was collateral damage. Yeah. And now they've gone, okay, maybe we went too far. Yeah. Hands up, we apologize. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's one of those things, right, where uh, I know uh, after last week, you know, take two was getting a huge amount of copying a huge amount of flack and that sort of thing. And yeah, you can argue that maybe before you just pull this massive, like, you know, really popular mod and uh, ban, ban it from using the game and that sort of thing, maybe figure out whether or not this is the right move to make for your fans uh, and the game. But at the same time, when they're going, well, this is something that's affecting the, the financial side of our game. We're trying to protect the users and all that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Like big company, sometimes they do sort of stuff like this. I think it's pretty impressive that they turned around after a week and gone, you know, okay, fine, we're letting it back on. We we see that we've done something terribly wrong because yeah. we've now looked at our Steam page. So now I guess everyone's happy except the cheaters. Yeah, screw you cheaters. <laughs> All your good stuff's still gone. Moving on, China is making a move to ban live streaming on a bunch of major websites. It's certainly not news that the People's Republic of China has some pretty strict censorship laws across most of its media formats. To protect national security and maintain social stability, you can't visit sites like Google, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, even Pinterest is blocked in China. So I don't know how anyone over there manages to find cute and clever pantry storage solutions. I imagine their pantries are just a chaotic mess over there. Is that, is that a thing on Pinterest? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We'll you throw up a picture. You should see my pantry. You should see my pantry. No one in China can. The ban will hit China's Twitter-esque Sina Weibo, news website ifeng.com, and game streaming platform Akfun. Gaming is the biggest area of the market to grow, largely led by video game streaming services like Douyu. It is not yet known when these live streaming services will be taken down. So the reason for this ban is mainly because these streaming sites have been used to project political opinion. Dissent. Yeah. <laughs> and um, commentary and opinions and stuff like that. Yeah. So the government feels like they can't control that, so they're just like, ban it! They're such killjoys. <laughs> I, I read an interesting article uh, about this this morning about how this is just how China works is that a new social network or a new form of media comes up and then it just booms and it goes huge. Uh, the statistics of the amount of people who are live streaming in China is just astronomical. And then when it gets too big, then the government goes, okay, we can't control this anymore and then just shuts and it down. And they shut it down. Yeah, yeah. So is that with the view that a new one is going to pop up? Pro yeah, that like something because else will come up like... Because in, Twitch is already banned over there. You, yeah. You can't Twitch stream yeah. or, or use YouTube or anything like that. So this was 
I guess, the replacements, that it was a localized one that could presumably be more controlled in China. Yeah, but I guess it's too hard to control, from a government perspective, it's too hard to control live streaming video as opposed to like a text post where you can search you know, a website for any mention of this word or this person or whatever. Yeah. Whereas, you, you know, you've got all this live stream people, video of people saying, but like, realistically, a huge, you know, these game streaming sites, you know, it's not like it's just political dissent the whole time. <laughs> it's not just you, every game that you click on, it's actually, you know, it's a picture of World of Warcraft, but you just go in there and it's someone just dressed, giving like political manifesto speeches, dressed as like an <laughs> elf. <laughs> Or is it? Or is it? Because that would be a streaming service I would definitely watch. Tell you what though, bring it here, ban Twitch, ban Twitch chat. That's the, I mean, if you're gonna ban anything, get rid of Twitch chat. If you could ban that from here and just have the video, I feel like we're probably- No, if you do thing. that, then people would just spam our like videos with negative reviews. And then we'd have to like, you We'd know? have to give in to terrorist we'd demands. We'd have to give in to terrorist demands. Full circle. All right, in other news, Gearbox continues to fight to make Battleborn work. After making the entire game free to play just a few weeks back, they've now dropped a new PvP mode called Supercharge. The 3v3 mode comes with three custom maps, and it's all playable right now for the absolutely correct price of zero dollars. Not to be outdone, Titanfall 2 is getting two new maps this week, also free. From the 27th of June US time, you'll be able to download live fire map traffic and a reworked version of War Games from Titanfall 1. Along with the maps come other tweaks, including a third weapon slot for pilots and a new execution animation. And finally, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds has surpassed 4 million sales on PC. This puts revenue at 100 million US dollars in just 13 weeks. The game isn't even officially released yet, and it has sold more copies than Breath of the Wild. And a touch of the local esports news for your Mondays, and Hi-Rez held their mid-year finals in Adelaide. Legacy Esports was crowned the best Smite team in the region after beating LG Die Wolves in the grand final, taking home the lion's share of the $25,000 split two prize pool. And in Paladins, Kanga Esports was victorious over Kings in the path to DreamHack grand final. This secured them a spot at DreamHack Valencia in mid-July, where they'll compete against the best Paladins teams in the world. That is it for today's news. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel this afternoon for Soon Play, so you'll know what you will soon be playing. You can follow Screenplay in all of these places. Details are in the description below. The description <laughs> below! I'm Nick. I'm Steph. And we'll see you every weekday for the rest of your lives. Steph, take us out. Say the bit that I was supposed to say, but you now have to say because I covered for you by singing. Uh, we're going to leave you with this Mario 64 mod, which adds a little bit of Odyssey. Details below! I love that this is called the fun version. <laughs> yeah, because Mario 64, famously boring game. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this is what it's going to be like in Odyssey, just wandering around, putting a hat on little things that look like poo, and uh, this is pretty much the entire game. Yeah! Oh, right. he became the platform! Okay, that's kind of cool. Oh, this is like Mario, but like Prey. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> you never know where he is. You, know. you walk into a room and it's like, is this a coffee cup or is this secretly Mario? Well, I feel like the hat's a bit of a giveaway. The, the coffee cup would have a small Just red a tiny hat. red hat with an red M on hat it. On it. <laughs> He's breaking your heart a little bit because I mean, you've spent $4,000 on Hearthstone. I could have spent two grand if the <laughs> system was there in the first place. This is a... Uh... I feel like they should give you some kind of little reward, a little... Something something for people who've put in the big bucks. I feel they should too, but that would mean they need to give something away for free.